Oh, do you hear that? It's the call of the wild. Welcome to another round of the book reviews. And I am reviewing the book named The Call of the Wild by Jack London. This book was published in 1903 and it's the most famous work of of the author. It's a book very similar to White Fang, which I have previously reviewed, but with a different aspect and a different tale, different character, but as still essential nature and the same sort of topic, the location is very similar as well. So this is the adventure of a 140 pound, uh, 63 kilograms uh, dog, which is a St. Bernard and Scotch Collie mix, a interesting combination there called Buck. And so Buck is this dog who was basically stolen, taken from his home in, in Northern California, where he was initially just a house dog, a very well luxuriated, well rested, well fed, um, a dog out of connect with his nature, I suppose. And he basically got stolen and uh, shipped to the Yukon Trail. So this is in Northern Canada, very similar scenery as you can um, imagine from the White Fang book where it was a wolf out in the wild. Very similar thing where he's in the snow, he's in these hard, dirty, dark, dangerous places. And this is on the Klondike region where they had the gold rushes. So basically there was miners going out to these Northern outposts where they were mining for gold and so to get out there or through the snow through the ice they would need uh, sled dogs and so these dogs would be attached to the sled packs of six to twelve something like that and and taken out there so buck goes through this sort of journey where he'll have some very good owners at the start and he's learning the ropes of how he of learning the ropes uh, literally tied to ropes and learning how to become a sled dog learning how to live in the wild trying to i guess get rid of all of his previous conditioning as a as a house dog so his various owners some of these good in the end some of them are very bad and treat him very very poorly he comes to the the brink of death and is saved by i guess like a rugged outdoorsman called john thornton thornton something like that and falls in love with with this owner and this is i guess the first real owner he's had where he he falls in love where he really enjoys being with this person and, and only wants the best for them. They have their own little mini adventures and uh, eventually he's he, the the dog Buck keeps getting called and called to the wild, to natureness, um, to joining a wolf pack, to living through his senses. And you can see his evolution throughout the book as well, how he gets to this point. Eventually his owner dies, John dies and he fully integrates into the wild and I guess it's like a, a happy ending of, of sorts. So there was actually a recent movie adaptation of this same book as well with Harrison Ford as the main character. And I think they had a CGI dog uh, throughout the whole movie of playing Buck. And it's, I actually saw the movie before I read the book, but when I got the book, I didn't realize it was called that even though the name is exactly the same as the movie. It was only about a third of the way through where I realized, oh, okay, this is actually the movie that I saw, you know, two months, three months previous. So that was an interesting little crossover where two things, which I rarely do reading, I guess, children's books and watching movies combined together. So there you go. Interesting. So some of the themes of the book, the uh, return to the wild and rediscovering of the baser, deeper rooted instincts. And is this good or bad? I don't think we really find out per se. It works out well for Buck, but you can see he takes on aspects that as a, as a person, as a human, you maybe would say, okay, those aren't particularly nice things. His, I guess, lust for, for power, his ability to kill, his dangerousness, his short temperament and things like that. But he also learns how to survive, how to to lead, how to um, fend for himself and not require anyone else, which are other aspects that you would say, okay, these are maybe good things. And it seems a little bit silly applying that to a dog, but that's the way it's written as well. It's anthromo anthropomorphized, something like that, where the animal takes on human characteristics. And it was specifically written this way by the author, Jack London. Nature is the ultimate test and only the fit will survive. And so there's, I guess, a, a question asked 
throughout this book or coming from the book, which is, is there room for learning and getting rid of previous things you have learned? And also, I guess, getting into the nature versus nurture debate, which is, are the things, are the way you're born initially, the the genes, that's what determines you. And that's how that will dictate everything up throughout your life. Or is it also the things that interact with you, which uh, as you're learning, as you're growing, as you're becoming a person, is that what shapes you? And I guess in general, it's it's roughly a 50-50 split. Uh, In this case, I would say it was more, he had this innate ability in him to, to survive in the wild, to get rid of the unnecessary things that weren't helpful and become this, this wild animal, this, this dog, this part, uh, something that can connect with the, the greater unknown and, and thrive in that sense. Some of my own observations from the book were, uh, sometimes you just like another book better, even if, uh, this one is, I guess, the more famous, well-known version of, of the Jack London books. And, what was it in particular? I, I'm not particularly sure. I think I just enjoyed the character of White Fang, the wolf, better than the actual dog um, in Buck in, in this case. And yeah, sometimes you, you'll you find that maybe an author's style you like, but you don't particularly like the best or the well-known one. So it's a good... It's good, I guess, to not just write off an entire genre just or, or an entire author just because you've read one of that and then say, you know what, I don't really like that because there is quite variations between the same thing. Even like this is almost identical. The book, the setting, the way it's written is almost identical to White Fang, but I just enjoyed White Fang so, so much more. So interesting little thing there. Um, My own affirmation of susceptibility to pictures and my lack of imagination and creativity. So the book actually had a a lot different feel after I realized that I had seen the movie. And so then from then on, as I was reading, I sort of, well, for one, knew what the store, the basic storyline and plot's going to be. Obviously it's very different because movie adaptations are different. They cut things, they add things that weren't there, yada, yada. But for me, it, yeah, it really just highlighted how susceptible, how much I rely on on I guess certain pieces of information. And if I have that information presented to me, that's how I'm gonna see it. So as I was reading the book, all I could imagine in my mind was what I had seen in the movie and scenes that matched up very similarly to to what I was reading. And even then, you know, I I probably, there almost were definitely times where I was reading something and I just had in my mind the picture of the movie, but, that wasn't what was being described there. It could be describing, you know, a big valley with a lake in it or whatnot. And I would be thinking of a mountainous treed area that I had seen in the movie. So, uh, yeah, I suppose just this is definitely applicable to me. I'm not sure how much to other people as well, but be maybe not cautious or careful, but be aware that if you have that other input, a visual input in this case, or perhaps even, a, a soundtrack if music affects you more or, or anything like that, you're going to have a very different experience. If you re, if you watch the Harry Potter movies first and then read the books, it's going to be a different experience. I'm not saying it's good or bad or whatever, but it is different. And so that's just something to be aware of. Both White Fang and, and Call of the Wild also have redemptive aspects to it, but completely different trajectories as well. In Call of the Wild, Buck goes from civilized to like an uncivilized, savage, natural animal. Whereas in White Fang, it's completely opposite. It goes from a wolf born in the wild, interacting with humans, and then I guess essentially switching places. And Jack London probably wrote the books like that so that there would be this, I guess, contrast between the two. And that might be why I just prefer the White Fang story. Perhaps I prefer naturally going from nature into a more sort of civilized context. In summary, for me, the book was a little bit flat and I connected more with the White Fang character, as you could probably tell from from what I was saying. So I'm giving Call of the Wild a a 5 out of 10. Just didn't interest me, interact with me as as much as White Fang did. So 
if you want my recommendation, go to White Fang. If you if you're only going to read one of the two book of these two books, I would definitely say White Fang is the superior. But that's just my own perspective. What's something pragmatic I'm going to take from it? Well, don't piss off wild animals. <laughs> there is a absolutely brutal scene in the book where another dog, Curly interacts with uh, curly's been taken from from his or her own i guess like sheltered upbringing as well and is now having to become a sled dog and tries to interact with other sled dogs in a very nice friendly uh, friendly cautious manner going up to them sniffing trying to make friends and that scene just turns instantly all these other dogs basically attack and kill curly and um, Buck just watches on in, I guess, astonishment where, you know, this dog was alive before and, and now is dead. His, his friend was alive and now is gone. And I think that's just a good metaphor for, for wild animals in general. You, you need to be careful with those things. You, you really can't know what's going on inside of their brains, what they're feeling, what, uh, what is important to them because they are not humans. And so we just don't have that, that same connection with them. So even if you have the best of intentions, even if you have nothing, you you do not fear them. You do, you know you have no ill will towards them. They're 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 savage animals, and so they can not always, but they can absolutely turn on you and um, and be very dangerous. So just a little thing from me there, a little um, something to take away from it. So that's all. That's it for today. I'm gonna leave you there. Peace.